Hey you guys, Rishi here, bringing you some advice on a question that I was asked a lot, and that is, how do you track your progress leading up to your USMLE? It's one thing to have all of your materials ready for what you're actually gonna be using and really pushing through those, but it's another thing to know, are you wasting your time? And time is super crucial when it comes to studying for a board exam like this. If you got more than one or two months, this is definitely a video for you, but if you've got less than one or two months and you really just need to figure out a way to cram, this may not be the best video, because one piece of advice that I'm using is taking practice examinations, and those take a lot of time. Luckily, I was able to figure out these concepts pretty early on while I was getting through medical school and they've really helped me out. Because no matter how much time you have on your hands, you don't want to waste time. And getting right into it, number one is taking a baseline MBME examination prior to even starting your dedicated period. And the reason I think this is super important is because it gives you a hint and an idea of how vague the questions are on the USMLE. Like they really aren't giving you that much information, they're giving you small little hints in the clinical vignettes. You can take any of the exams between 13 and 19, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but just take one of them so you you know where you're at. And it's totally okay if you get a terrible score on this because at the end of the day, it's not gonna matter. What's really gonna matter is your final exam score. This is just a baseline to gauge where you're at. That only is gonna be used as a comparison score for your next MBME practice exam that you take, but it's also kind of a little slap in the face and wake up call, if you will, to really get you to study. My first exam was literally terrible. It was like around 200, but I didn't freak out. Well, actually I kind of did a little bit. So easier said than done, don't freak out because it's okay if that score is really low. If you don't have a lot of time to study and you have less than one to two months, this part is not really gonna pertain to you because NBMEs are a whole half USMLE exam and they take a lot of hours. And right now you need to cram because you do not have time to be taking a bunch of practice exams. Okay, maybe you probably can take two, maybe one in the beginning and one in the middle prior to your final exam. If you've got about two months, I think that should probably work. But with any less time than that, you don't want to be wasting too much time on practice exams. Rather, you really need to be studying concepts. Number two is to take your next MBME and learn from it and gauge where your score is. This is a really good indicator for whether or not you're doing better or worse. Again, it doesn't matter which MBME number you take. It's just really important understanding how vague they're asking those questions because those are gonna be really similar to your actual exam questions. If you're getting between 10 points plus or minus, totally fine even if you get the same exact score or a little bit lower than that. But if you're 15 points lower, you're going in the wrong direction. And that could be happening because of one of two things. One is that you're not understanding the vagueness and sort of the question styles that you're being asked. Like you really need to review physical exam findings and those little nitty gritty details that they're giving you. For example, is the patient female or African American or what ethnicity they are because those change the propensity of a certain disease happening and could potentially change the right answer. Something as non-specific as they had a fever two weeks ago which resolved on its own could literally mean mean everything in the question. And that little sentence that they gave you is probably this long and just totally blown in there and you probably don't think that matters at all, but it probably does. Number two is that you don't have the right way to retrieve that information in your head while you're at the question. Maybe there's not a way for you to sort of think of your first aid page or that concept that you really needed for that question and therefore you need to figure out a better way to review your information or figure out a way to actually learn it in the first place so that it sticks and that you memorized it. Notice that I mentioned first aid. I personally think everybody studying for the USMLE should be using this book because it's a book that's pretty much almost predicting what's gonna be on your exam and it's all concise in one area. Now, it may be a pretty thick book, but imagine having all your information scattered across different books. It doesn't work for me and I think for the majority of people, it's probably preferable to have all your information in one place. Number three, sort of unique to my study fashion is using flashcards to gauge how well you're doing. I personally personally use actual physical flashcards like cutting out pieces of paper from either printer paper or a notebook. And then what I do is while I'm going through my flashcards, any flashcard that I get right is going to go into one pile and anything that I get wrong or I'm kind of shaky on goes into another pile. The pile that you got wrong, if that's getting thicker or staying relatively the same over time, probably not a good sign and you need to figure out a better way to memorize those flashcards. Those cards I go through about once or twice every day and the ones that you get right can be gone through maybe once a day or once every two or three days because you're getting those concepts right and you don't want to keep wasting time on things that you're getting right that you already know. You need to focus where you don't know information. So take a specific flashcard and figure out a way to memorize that information. And I do that one of three ways. That's It's my way of how I really understand concepts. Either watch a really specific video on that concept, something that's preferably short and gonna give you information super quickly. Two, drawing a picture or some sort of diagram to help you understand that. Get really weird with it, that's totally okay. You should see my first aid, it's literally insane. And then three, coming up with a mnemonic or diagram to memorize that info. If you're not using at least one of those three things, try to figure out some way to memorize it because otherwise you're just wasting your time. I don't think there's any reason to open up a large pathology or physiology textbook to try to come up with some sort of 
of way to memorize it or read texts. If they have a nice diagram in there, yeah, that's one thing, but even opening up the pages and finding the book, getting to the index, glossing through it and finding where that information is takes a lot of time. And you've already got the information that you need via your first aid, whatever other review information that you're using and the UWorld question that may have had that concept in it. Fourth way I like to know of whether I'm going in the right direction or not is how long are you taking to review your notes? If you've been taking an hour to review the pathology portion of cardiology for the last four weeks and you're not getting through it any faster, you may not be going in the right direction. Leading up to your exam, you really should be getting through your info faster and faster. I think there's some idea that if you look at a concept or excerpt from a textbook for a long period of time, you're all of a sudden magically gonna memorize it. And I think that's absolutely not true. If you're taking longer than five to 10 minutes, my cutoff is five minutes of me looking at a concept and you're not understanding it and not able to replicate it or reproduce it, or maybe even teach it to somebody who has a question on it, you're wasting your time. You need to back away from the textbook, figure out some way to diagram it out create a mnemonic, drawing, whatever it is, those three things that I talked about earlier, some way to memorize and understand that information. You cannot just keep staring at a page just expecting you to memorize it or have some sort of photogenic memory and then you're gonna reproduce it on the exam day when you need that info. That's absolutely not true for the majority of us. Majority of us do not have photogenic memory. Number five, when you're doing UWorld questions, are you getting through the questions faster and is your percent correct going up or down or is it not changing at all that's an awesome way to know whether or not you're going the right direction or not if you're moving through the question vignettes faster and faster and you're starting to get those hints that they're throwing at you that's a really good sign that means you're really starting to understand those nitty-gritty details of either physical exam findings or lab values that they're hinting at you to try to get you to the right answer or the right next best step if you're taking about the same amount of time over the last month or taking longer and longer to get through even just a question and then getting to the answer that means you're really not understanding the question and clinical vignettes that they're throwing at you and you need to really review that sort of information because that's what makes a doctor a doctor is being given vague small amounts of information putting the puzzle pieces together and then coming up with the right answer it's hard it's it's tough business it's not easy which is why you're in school because you can do this you've got what it takes to become a doctor you've got what it takes to take those small pieces of information and put it together into some concise idea that makes sense for example by basil or crackles a super simple concept but it's a small subtle hint that's telling you that there may be fluid in the lung Lungs. When you auscultate the lungs and you're hearing crackles, it means that the alveoli are filled with fluid and when they expand and the patient's breathing in, that fluid is sort of expanding and the alveoli snap open and it creates that crackle while you're listening. So now you've got to figure out, okay, well, what's causing there to be fluid? Is it overall fluid overload? Are they in renal failure? Is it left-sided heart failure, etc.? It gets you to that next concept, but you wouldn't have gotten there if you didn't understand that first concept that they gave you in the stem of the question. All they told you was he's feeling short of breath for the last four weeks and when you listen to his lungs, crackles to the bases. Again, it's kind of a simple concept, but just an idea of sort of the small little hints that they're giving you in the seventh question. All right, guys, I really hope this helps. Remember, tracking your progress is super important to make sure you're on the right track, not to waste more of your time, because not a lot of us have time when it comes to studying for a board exam. The other thing is that small sense of accomplishment and that feeling of, wow, I think I'm really starting to understand this, and your percentages are going up, you're getting through questions faster, you're reviewing everything faster, and that flashcard pile, that's all your wrongs, is starting to get thinner and thinner, that's a really good feeling and that's actually really going to help you push forward because honestly the whole process is super stressful. Being in school and having to study for an exam at the same time is not an easy ordeal for anyone. So keep yourself pushing forward, track your progress, make yourself feel good. Please go ahead and post any questions or comments below. And as always, good luck.